Welcome to Pantec Ministries. Don't forget to subscribe and like. John 1 verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Genesis 1, 1 to 5. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The Spirit always has the time To send me words that always rhyme My quiet place is in my bed Where thoughts run through a tired head With pen in hand I'll start to write His words that come to me by night With bleary eyes I cannot gauge The words that run right off my page Before another word is done I'm fighting sleep that soon will come I'll fall asleep but soon I'm stirred He's given me another word Another word, perhaps a line I'm half asleep, they can't be mine. But by the morning I will find Just what the Spirit had in mind. I cannot take the credit due. The words from him are meant for you. He knows the words will do their part And slowly stir a listening heart. In the beginning was the word. Now, our reading comes from the Gospel of John. Now, as you probably know, John was a disciple of Christ. And in his Gospel, he describes himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. It's great what you can do when you write your own uh, uh, Gospel, isn't it? Jesus loved me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Uh, John was part of Jesus' intimates. The other two being Peter and James. When a difficult task was to be performed, an extraordinary miracle or sign was about to take place, they accompanied Jesus. Now, examples of these are the healing of the synagogue's leader, his daughter, Jairus, the transfiguration, the prayer during Christ's passion in the garden. Peter, James and John were always there with him. Christ has intimates. And when required, he needed the blessing of their presence. He took them with him and expected much from them. I wonder if this morning, if you're an intimate of Christ, does he know you? Are you close to him? Are you close to him? Do you desire to be close to him? Say, Lord, come into my life so I'm an intimate with you. Just like Peter, James and John, that you can just whisper to me. And we can pray together. John, who wrote this gospel, had therefore had first-hand experience of the great deeds that Christ did and saw the things that were performed in secret. And he begins his gospel with these words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. John saw what took place. He had no doubts. He witnessed He saw the authority that Christ had as he changed lives, as when he healed and performed mighty deeds. He was a witness. So therefore he could write these words. He understood the authority of knowing who and what Christ was. It was God in the manifestation of the flesh of a human being. For God is with us. Do you know the word? Is he real to you, just as he was to John? Do you believe in Christ's deity and the authority that he has in his word? It says, in the beginning was the word. 
What is the word? The word describes here to us is Jesus. John knows the word for he experienced him physically. He performed ministry with him. Christ discipled him, taught him. And ultimately washed John's feet. You would think that John would use his name in physical form. Which was Jesus. But John knew that he was so much more. I wonder if you know this morning how much more Christ is. How much more God is. That he's provided you with that vision of the expansion of what he is. That this universe is so small to him. Yet you're so precious to him as individuals. John knew he was so much more than this. And he was at the beginning of all things. John is describing this for us. John is setting the scene for what was to follow in that gospel. And what we need to know that God stepped down from heaven in the form of his son. And blessed his creation. Because he knew it needed rescuing. It needed a saviour who came for his creation so they once again would walk in the coolness of the day together. I don't know about you, but I need God with me to walk in the coolness of the day so that we might have a conversation. That we might have a blessing together. Teddy will tell you that uh, while writing his poems, um, God, to Terry, can be very inconvenient sometimes. He's written... Uh, several poems when he's been out painting his shed and then the Lord will give him a, a, a line and then he'll go in because he needs to write it down he writes it down is there any more Lord? okay so he goes back to uh, painting uh, his fence and the Lord then gives him a second line just to go back in and do it again if the Lord's trying to keep him fit or whatever but of course the Lord works on his time scale but he de- demands of us because he's given so much to <coughs> Our intention. Do you know the word as John did? Is he real to you? Can you hear, see and feel him? As these words are read out to you, what is it you feel and think? The revelation is imparted to change your life. It says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was <coughs> With God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. And what if you have a sense of excitement and anticipation from the word, those words. That who and what God is. John believed that he was the disciple that Jesus loved. Do you believe and know that Jesus loves you? Do you believe that? Do you know that? Do you understand that? Is that in your life? That you, just as John, could be an intimate with Christ. Because the one, the word has chosen you. The one who was the beginning of all things loves you. We seldom ponder on the beginnings. Oh look into our Bibles at Genesis. Before anything was formed or created, God was God. This is his creation. Now a lot of people think that we're in a, like the matrix. Uh, We're in a simulation. Well, what people don't understand is we are because God created what we're existing in. He has formed all of this. He is running the show for us. Nothing existed until God spoke us and this universe into existence. There was no light, no earth, no sun, moon or stars. No creature called or flew. No water flowed. No sky existed or clouds. Yet God persisted and he was about to speak. Yet inside of him was a light and that light contain you the light of mankind that is why it says in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind you were in the mind of God before this universe was created he knew you he knew that you would be the light of this world that would shine into this world you were in the mind of God at that time 
saw you. He knew you. He understood you. You were the life of light. And he created this universe for you. You were in the mind, his mind. He knew that you were, would be the light to shine in the darkness of this world. And I don't know about you, but this world is, can be very dark at the moment. But you can be a light that shines through. I think I talked to you just by your smile. By your smile. You know, when I look out at you folks sometimes, um, you seem to be this a lot, really. It, you know, uh, it's the same, uh, Miriam will know, uh, being part of Sober Choir. We're so concentrating on things that we're, we're very dowdy and look down. We're, and our choir master say, do this, you know. It makes all the difference a smile, isn't it? Just changing the shape of your mouth, how much that can change. And it lights up your faces. It's fantastic, fantastic. Am I describing you this day that you are the light that shines brightly for what God has done? You know, this universe didn't create you. It didn't form you. It didn't stitch you together in your mother's womb. God has done these things. And he knows you. He truly loves us and has given his all for you. You were sent into this universe from the mind of God so that you would be the light of mankind. That you would be full of light. Because this world is so full of darkness. I wonder if you bring joy and peace because this world needs it. I'm sure those people around you need it. Or is it you bring strife and anger? Do you bring blessing and purpose or is destruction and do you cause people stress? It says that in him was life. And that life was the light of mankind. This is who you are. That's who you are meant to be. That is who God formed you to be. But you may say, well, Chris, you don't know my life. You don't know the trouble I'm in. Allow God to take that trouble from you to provide that peace. And especially if you go into situations that you are in difficulty, we say, Lord, provide me with your spirit and place your armour upon me so I can overcome. They yeah, may have told you this before, I, I'm, I'm unsure. But I know when I go into a stressful situation, uh, especially amongst family or things like that, I know there's problems, I say out loud, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this stops now. Much of the world does not believe in God, and it's to their terrible loss. Yet when Moses asked what his name was, he said, I am. As Christians, you know, you don't have to prove that God exists, that we, for some reason, get caught up in these arguments. We don't have to show an image of him for his spirit. We do not have to demonstrate his works or deeds, for he is God. What people see, you see, is you. Is you. And they say, this is what God is like. What people experience is the image that you portray. And they have the right to ask, do you know the word? I'm talking about Jesus there. Do you know the word? Are you able to portray him because he's real to you? Do you see with the eyes of Jesus because you are Christ's disciple? Are you able to perform the mighty deeds as he's told us that we can do and instructed us to do because God is with you and trusts you? It's a deep revelation within you and beginning that God is God and he hovered over the deep until he made his creation so that you could be so that you could be so that you could exist and be a blessing because Christ is in you. I know many people ask for proof, but God doesn't have to prove himself. Instead, he desires to use you as a blessing and work with you to be a blessing. Yet we doubt it, don't we? We doubt. And the doubt is placed based upon a lie that we receive, especially when we're young, which has been told to us 
by the father of lies. How could God choose you? How could you be the children of God? You know what you've done, what you've said. You know who you are. You know that you let God down. I hear that so many times in prayer. And I try to say to people, you can't let God down. It's impossible. You may disappoint him. You may disappoint, let those around you down. But you can't let him down because he's chosen you. Father Lai goes on and say, your life has been unworthy of him. How could God use you? You're an unclean vessel. How could you contain light and life? Yet the word has been given to us to free us from the freedom of these lies. What does our reading say? In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Do you see, can you hear what God is saying? You were in the mind of God before this universe began. You are precious, you are holy, you have been put together to be a blessing. You have purpose, you have greatness upon you, you have authority in this world. It's been thrust upon your shoulders. You've been given a purple robe to wear, a ring has been placed upon your finger, a crown awaits you in heaven. This is the truth of who and what you truly are. Not what the devil would like to tell us, what the world would like to tell us, but rather who and what you are. We can accept it, feel uncomfortable about it, but God doesn't because you are his child, you are his chosen. Otherwise, why did God go and create this universe for? Why did he send his son to redeem you so he could sacrifice himself which we're, we're celebrating just after our time together in this service if you were unworthy if you were without purpose if you believe you've let him down and you have no value then what all of God has done makes no sense the truth is for the whole world for it was in darkness and God sent his light into it Not only the light of the sun and the moon, but his son who then passed that light and life into you. You who are God's people. You are the light of God this day. I wonder if you recognise that. You have been chosen by the word. So Jesus' light can be seen in this world because you would then know that you have been saved, redeemed, love empowered. And you have the mantle of authority on your shoulders by the one, because it says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness has not overcome it. Are you ready this morning to be free? To receive freedom from the one who is the word so that your light would shine which comes from him in your lives. For he desires to you to be the light and life that this world needs. So you're able to be with the one who was there in the beginning, who is here right now and will be there at the end. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you and bless you that you are our God. And thank you that you have chosen us. Don't forget to subscribe and like.